What is up, guys? Listen, uh, you know, we're riding with FAMU this year, and a lot of y'all told me I had to get this guy for the show, man. So we got the freshman sensation, gentle hunt, def defensive lineman for the FAMU Rattlers, man. This guy was a freshman All-American, third team All-SWAC selection, and is one of the most accomplished freshmen in the SWAC this past season, man. So, Gentle, thank you for coming on the show, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. Absolutely. So we got to go back to Florida high school football, man. It's Florida and Texas high school football always gets all the props, man. But coming out of Gainesville High School, what was your recruiting process like and which teams were recruiting you the hardest? Uh, I'll say back in my high school days, I will say most definitely I committed really early. I committed to the University of South Florida when Coach Strong was there. Um, I committed like coming out of my 10th grade year. I loved it there. Um, we had a great, we had a lot of great guys coming from there. In my opinion, you know, I loved it. I um, mean, it was only like two hours away from home. So, you know, close to home, great atmosphere. And after I left from there, um, I tried to make one out to Tennessee. Didn't really work out. Me and my mom and my dad was like, um, you know, they get a little bit up in age. So I figured out, like, you know, I really want them to come to every game. I don't want them to drive a little bit too far and this and that. So I went ahead and stayed a little bit close to home and committed to Coach Simmons and the Rattlers. I, hey, it was a great decision. It paid off in a big way. But outside of just your family, man, what was it about FAMU itself that led you to commit there? What drew you to the program? 100% got to the family atmosphere. You know, I had to say, like, I remember, like, yesterday, National Signing Day, um, Coach Simmons told me, like, me and my mom had, like, a little – it was an accident that morning when I was going to commit, and I just couldn't commit that day. Like, my mom and my family going through a lot that morning, and – I called Coach and I was like, you know, I want to have you rest in the hospital. I I was like, Coach, I'm, I would never sign without my parents. Like, that's not what I'm going to do. And he literally told me, like, Jensen, I have your offer ready. Like, you're good. From that point on, I figured out it was bigger than football. You know, I figured out, like, you know, he cares more about, you know, me as a person, me and my family, my mother in, the, in that uh, situation. You know, so at that point, I was like, you know what? Like, this is something I can really be. And it's only two hours away from home, you know, so. I feel like all in all, it was great. My mother went here. My Both of my sisters actually graduated from here, and they are nurse practitioners now. So, I mean, they did it. My mother did it. Why not come here? I like it. It's a family affair down there in FAMU. I, I like to hear that. But looking at the coaching staff, man, outside of Coach Willie Simmons, which of the assistant coaches were you closest to during the recruiting process, and what was really their pitch to you through it all? Uh, a guy named Coach Street, Coach Ralph Street. Um, he was a, now he was really, really in tune in my um, recruiting process as well. You know, I figured out like he and my dad really was really close. You know, two military guys, you know, two country boys like I am as well. So, I, I, you know, when they two talk, I feel like, you know, he can sit down at dinner table and we can actually have a great long conversation. And my whole thing about high school was like, you know, of course I'm going to cosplay football, but when he sat down, you know, and we talked, actually, it was no, never about football. You know, you hear football day in and day out all the time. So at that point, when I figured out, like, he didn't really care, he wanted to care about me as a person, like I said before, it's just, you know, that changed from a whole different level of trust, in my opinion. I like it, man. And so this season was was really, even though you guys, you know, fell a little bit short for the SWAC championship, it was a historic season for FAMU with the playoff appearance, with having an ESPN film crew follow you guys around in, in the fall camp and things like that. But for you, what were your final takeaways on the 2021 season? I almost definitely had to say um, I loved it, you know, everything about it, you know. My class was we came in without any football, no college football at all. So, you know, that caused the COVID class down here. So, but to have that year off and not have a chance to play really gave me, I would say, an extra, a extra boost. You know, you come in, you learn to play it's way better. You get bigger, faster, stronger. You know, in my opinion, we're one of the best group conditioning coach we have here. You know, and I feel like, and I feel like um, trusting the guys and hearing from the, the veterans on this team, you know, telling me what to do, the do's and the don'ts. You know, and that really changed my game from a whole different level. That's effective around the game. Um, and it paid off. It paid off for you with all the American awards, with with, with all with, with selections, everything like that. But the one question I do have, man, why not us? Was filmed th this this past all season. How different was fall camp with the camera crew following you guys around? <laughs> they was there. 
uh, they was, I, my family, I thought they was more committed than us, you know. <laughs> uh, they was up in the morning with us. Uh, they was from, you know, like I said, that's the dawn. They was there. Um, but it really did show, like, everything in the film, everything throughout the series was legit. You know, no cuts, you know, from us waking up, working out every day, eating. I'm talking about it really showed the atmosphere around FAMU, you know. And I feel like, and I feel like they went above and beyond with the film. You know, everybody's seen it. Like they said, we feel like we are the best HBCU, you know, in America. So, you know, why not come and film us? So, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I love how we could do that and put out to the world, like, you know, we're not just, you know, some pushover team, no pushover school. Like, we are the best of the best for the reason. Oh, man, I like it. It was a great documentary. I know a lot of people really enjoyed seeing you guys put in the spotlight. But we got to get to the defense, man. What a special defense this year. One of the top 10 in the entire yeah. country for FCS. You had yourself, Isaiah Land, Buck Buchanan Award winner, Marquise Bell, Antoine Collier. The list goes on and on. But for you, behind the scenes, what made this defensive unit so special this season? I had to say trust, you know, and we never argued. That's one thing about us. Like, we will always, let's say we'll be down the game, or let's say we have some rush patches going on. Nobody will ever argue, you know what I'm saying? And that was one big boost. Because, you know, some teams might break down when they score a quick little touchdown. We'll come to the sideline and be laughing. Like, you know, we just getting started. You know, because we know what type of guys we have on defense. We know the type of trust we have. You know, when, when Coach Smitty said one plus two go hunt, it's the truth. You know what I mean? We really, like, take everything and put it to above and beyond a different type of standard on this defense. And we really, like, had an offense back throughout the season. And even in practice, you know, it was no little, like, you know, buddy-buddy practices. We would go in there like we playing a full, you know, four-quarter game. And that's what really pushed us to become one of the best defense, you know, in the country. And that's one thing else. Um, we never chased, like, any stats and all like that. You know, we went in there, did our job, came out with a dub. I like it. I mean, I think the first game I really saw how different this defense could be as the season went on was that Alabama State game, man. I don't yeah. think you guys let them cross the 50 for like three and a half quarters. I mean, it was it was one of the most impressive performances of the season. I got to ask you about one game this season in particular, man, the Florida Classic. It doesn't get any bigger than that, man. It's 7-7 seven, seven at halftime, and y'all rattle off like 30-something unanswered points, and it's 40 40 something to seven by the end of the mm -hmm. third quarter, including your touchdown, man. So walk me through your emotions, man, when you got that ball and you were headed to the you were headed to the end zone. <laughs> oh, it was huge. Um, I just remember it was, you know, all we seen is a run play. You know, we just fill our gaps and everything else. Like Coach Smitty say, always, you know, we need 11 hats to the ball. And that's all we do all season long. 11 hats to that ball, we go, we go ahead and keep, you know, go and get though. You know what I mean? So as soon as we see the ball thrown, you know, we all run it. All I see is Bell just come and have an amazing hit on the guy. And him and Land had a great collision. And I looked down at the ground. I said, oh, that's money. You know, I had to get it and go. So when I get, pick it up, I see tons of blockers. All I see is green in front of me. And I'm going to the end zone. And it's extremely loud in there. So from that, I thought like that was one of the best third quarters I've ever seen this defense even have in my life, in my opinion. That was crazy. Oh, man, it, it was. I, I was sitting there at halftime like, man, they got to turn it up. And then I remember just by the end of the third quarter, I was like, they really just scored 33 unanswered points in this <laughs> quarter. I mean, it was insane. And you guys scored, like, defense scored some of them, too. It was it, it was impressive. But the other big thing you guys did this year, man, the first SWAC team to make the playoffs since 1997. I was one year old. That year, mm -hmm. when that when that happened, it was Jackson State. You guys made it in the early 2000s as a MEAC team. But what did it mean to you to be the first SWAC team to make the playoffs? And what were some of your learning experience for the first time in the FCS playoffs? In my opinion, it means a lot. You know, it's something that hasn't been done in a long time. And like I was saying earlier, you know, we come with a different standard and different mindset. You know, uh, we're trying to get to the point where we can compete with the bigger teams, you know, in America. You know, we're not just – of HBCU football, we not just, you know, swag football. We can go outside of this and play big time football, you know, big brand of football. So that's one thing that I once have most have most definitely have to say about um about us, you know. I I want people to not, you know, overlook us anymore. Like we wanna be one of the best teams in the country and we we're gonna stand on that, you know, day in and day out. I love it, man. I love it. I know a lot of people were really excited to see y'all get that opportunity to go over there and play Southeastern Louisiana with the 
former Walter Payton Award winner. It was a great matchup. But yeah. man, this 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 is the last question before we get into some other ones, man. At what is one game this season you wish you could play one more time? Jackson State. That, that that easy. That easy. Yeah. yeah, game game one of the season. Amazing game. You know, all we just needed was one point. And like like Coach Simmons was saying all year, way before the season started, you know, it's gonna come down to these two teams right here. And it was a great defensive game, but you know, one point and that one point killed us for the whole season. And shout out to Jackson State for going and you know, you know, going to the to the uh celebration bowl and you know competing. But like like Coach Simmons said the whole year, you know, it's gonna come down to that one point throughout the season. And if I can go back and do it again, I think everybody on this team wants to have to say Jackson State. Have to say Jackson State. Man, I, I'm telling you, and I mean, I gotta ask you if if that game was week 12 instead of week one, how different do you think it goes? I feel like it would have went way more different. Um, in my opinion, we would have had you know more learning about those guys, more film to watch on them. You know, they did a phenomenal job, 100%. In my opinion, you know, and they did great throughout the whole season. But I feel like it could have went a whole different route, in my opinion, because we have more film on each other. You know what I mean? You know, more yeah. film, people we're going against. So yeah. And we haven't played. I think they had a. I think they played in the spring, and mm-hmm. we never got a chance to. So seeing that was uh with that team that we have now, that was a big like jump. You know, I thought we could have been really special in that game. Absolutely, man. I, I agree. That's the toughest thing. They had a new quarterback who was a freshman, no film there. You guys yeah. are on like a six hundred day layoff. I mean, yeah. that that game had a lot of different storylines going into it. But man, before we get to know you a little bit more as a player. One of the most popular people to talk about in any SWAC media is head coach Willie Simmons, one of the most accomplished coaches in the SWAC. For you, what is he like behind the scenes, and what is his relationship like with his players? I, my thing, I feel like what you guys see, you know, not around the football team, what you're going to see outside, he's a legit head coach. Like, he's going to stand on whatever he says, you know. Whatever he says, he means it. You know, I feel like, in my opinion, he's one of the best coaches that I've been underneath. And I feel like he, like I said, the football is football, but he always preaches about what's the next step after this, you know, going to career fairs, you know, going to get your name out there, having a job, you know, doing stuff for your family, stuff like that. So I feel like he shows that father figure for us as players at the same time, more than the head coach role. Cause you know, everybody can make it in the field, but he always going to say, you know, but everybody can get a four year job. Everybody can get, you know, feed their family, you know, from time to time. So I feel like that's what really make him separated for just a head coach, as they say. That's, that's amazing. I think that came off even, like you said, on the documentary. That came off in a big way. I think it was the first scene of the um, Why Not Us. He got you guys to stand up there, introduce yourself, talk about, like, what you're all the fighting for, your dreams and things like that, and just really plug y'all selves. I thought that was a really awesome thing to see and kind of, you know, really eye-opening for some of the players and what they were going through behind the scenes. But Man, this was your redshirt freshman year, had a breakout season, but I want I want you to take me back to Gentle Hunt, week one against Jackson State, and tell me how that Gentle Hunt evolved into who I'm talking to today in terms of on-the-field play in your game. I'll say knowing, like, more so taking things more serious with the with film, the weight room, and stuff like that, because, you know, high school football is nothing like college football at all whatsoever you know people think faster you know run faster jump higher you know so from game one I thought I feel, I feel like I had an amazing game you know I feel like that we could have did you know something really great you know I sit down with my parents we talk a lot and and I feel like we just getting started you know not just saying with me but this team in general and I feel like you know things on the field and on the field are going to translate to be one of the best players I could be you know at FAMU so taking things serious all the way from the weight room, like I said, you know, film session and especially treatment. So that's one thing I got from these older guys on the team. You know, if you want to play and maintain, you know, the body that you have, you must definitely got to live in the treatment room, you know, have great grades off the field, and, you know, do everything you're supposed to do when it comes game time. Mm, I like I like that you mentioned the treatment, man. You got to take care of your body because without that, None, none of the other stuff's possible. So I like that you talked about that, man. But let's get to know you as a player, man. Which NFL player do you think you model your game after the most? <laughs> Honestly, it'll be two people. It'll be two people. Um, one of them is not a defense lineman at all. And the other one is, <laughs> I will have to say, 
you know, I always try to be that Aaron Don type guy. You know, I am the smaller D tackle, you know, and I feel like when I watch his film, he's a different monster. You know, everybody respects him, even even when he's a shorter guy on the field. So I'm not the, the typical 6'3", 6'2", 6'4", you know, D lineman. You know, I'm around that six foot area, and I feel like watching his film, you know, his quickness, his script, you know, can really put. If I watch, let me see, how, how can I say this? Watching him gives me a huge determination. You know, like he was like, you can do this because he did it. You know what I mean? And another guy right. I would say probably Luke Keekley. You know, watching mm-hmm. him, yeah, because I feel like everybody gave him the respect for not just being a great player, but knowing everything before the play starts. You know, if I can call out your guys' offensive play before you even snap the ball, and you know, and you actually run that play, imagine doing that for 120 snaps, 140 snaps, really like living in the film room, knowing what you're supposed to do every single time the ball snaps. It's just amazing to me. Man, I, I, I love that last comparison. That that was the most unique answer I've gotten, that you just took someone <laughs> completely out of position and made it relate. I, I love that. But, man, I was super – I was very superstitious. Even as an O-Wyman who usually they don't have many pregame routines, I was very superstitious with my pregame <laughs> routine. For you, what is your pregame routine on game days? Honestly, um, I always wake up and call my parents every game. You know, got to see how they is. And right before the game start, honestly, I go eat a simple little chocolate bar. You know what I'm saying? Like our coach lay out everything before the game time. You know, why not get a little bit of sugar going, a little dribbling and rush before you know you run out there and you're supposed to do. So I would most definitely say probably a protein bar and a nice little Gatorade and some pickle juice. Most definitely that's probably the game routine every game. Oh man, I like it. You said I get me a little sugar rush going. I can't be to. can't be lacking on that first drive. I really like that one, man. <laughs> but without giving away all your secrets, man, what is the number one mistake an offensive lineman can make against you? Moving too slow, in my opinion. You know, because let's just say if it's a scratch play, or you know, you come out your stance a little bit too slow. I feel like, in my opinion, you know, I'm gonna try to get past you. You know, this game is about quick twitch and speed or whoever gets out the ball faster. And I feel like that's one big mistake if you go against me, in my opinion. You got to be on your on your, on your toes, you know, ready to play. Man, there were a lot of offensive linemen that made that mistake this year. You and <laughs> you, you and Savian on the inside was, was is just a disgusting duo. I mean, you saw <laughs> Southeastern had no answer for you two for you two guys on the inside, and then you got to deal with Isaiah on the outside, which is a yeah. whole problem in, in, in itself. But I know, I know, in the line of scrimmage, I was an O lineman, so I know how bad it can be get in the trenches, man. Especially when you got to mm-hmm. go against the same guy all game long. Mm-hmm. Are you a big trash talker during the game? Nah, not me. Not me. Uh, I never was. I never was. But the guys around me most definitely, most definitely are. You know, in my opinion, when they say something, I sit there and I laugh. Cause I feel like it's <laughs> hilarious to me. But now nah, I was never the big trash talker. I'll be so locked in. I don't really have time to talk to the guy in front of me all game. But yeah, most definitely I might laugh on occasion if you really <laughs> cannot block me the whole game. That's probably what I, that's the most trash talk I might do. <laughs> I like it. Who's the biggest trash talker on FAMU's defense? Ooh, I gotta. I give you a top three. I gotta go. All right. Marquise, <laughs> God, he he was different. Um, Antoine Cardi was a different guy. Savion, those those probably the top three guys that will just you know wreck havoc all game. They gonna be in your ear from from the from the, from the first snap to the very last walking <laughs> off the field, going to about the different buses. So those top three guys are crazy. <laughs> I like it. The safeties, man, it's always the DBs. On this show, it's always the DBs <laughs> who get who get the bad rap. But to give a little bit of credit on the other side of the ball, man, who's the best offensive player you've ever faced? Mm. I will most definitely have to say, it's going to be so hard to just pinpoint one guy. I had to say Cole Kelly was one, for a fact. Um, I love, I will give credit to quarterbacks. We all supposed to sack them at the, at the same time, but, you know, him maneuvering up in the pocket, him knowing what he's supposed to do every single time the ball snaps, you know, him throwing the ball. Um, he he was a different guy. I had to give my respect to him because he knew what he had to do every single time the game was on the for him, every game. And I feel like he's going to have a really big, big um, spotlight in the NFL. So most definitely Cole Kelly is one of the best offensive players I've played against. 
Oh man, like man, that's a big dude too, man. Six, yeah. seven, and to be as big as he is to do what he does. I mean, he won the MVP at the NFL uh, PA game, so I, I agree with you. He's gonna have a bright future. But listen, I, I'm gonna take Jackson State off the table. That's way too easy. I can't give you that one. So, which yeah. other SWAC team are you most looking forward to play this season? I'm ready to play them all. You know, um, I'm ready to do it. You know, I feel like me and my brothers are ready to go down and, and fight, and we're gonna try to, you know, have a great match at game in and game out. But honestly, I probably would have say, I know Bethune is going to try to come back. You know, they want that trophy back. But Gremlin, probably Gremlin, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, they had a great class they just got for a bunch of guys. And Alabama and them too, you know, they wanted that game. That was a really good game that we had. So I think those two teams are going to try to, you know, come and take the top spot for a fact. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'm already got I already got my whole trip planned to go down to the <laughs> hole and see you guys play Grambling. That's gonna be an outstanding game. But last year, man, listen, I, I know Bragg is it's one of the best stadiums in the country at the FCS level. Outside of FAMU's home stadium, which SWAC team had the best environment last year? Ooh, that's tough. Cause I would say for my first game, I had to say the classic. The classic for a fact. Cause you see, my dad he graduated from Bethune, and seeing for my very first time, like you'll you'll hear all the stories about the classic coming up and stuff like that. But when you actually in the game and seeing everybody like there around the stadium spill from the bottom out to the top, that's a different level. That they're, they're, they're those guys down down south are crazy. You know they they want that win so bad. I had to say the classic for a fact. You know the the. Uh, but Thune can bring it. They can bring it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I like it. I know that household was a little was a little tight, man. But with, with Bethune dominating, so I think your dad yeah. had a little bit of bragging rights there for a while. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. Man, but listen, man, you're one of the top freshmen in the FCS right now. But as your career goes along, man, what is your response to those people who may be overlooking you for playing at the FCS level? Um, honestly, my opinion is turn the film. You know. Let the let the film speak for itself, you know. I don't want to go back and forth with arguing with people and stuff like that, but I had to say, you know, if there's any doubts in my game or, you know, you don't think I'm one of, you know, a top player, in my opinion, I'll say, well, if, you know, the turn the film. And if there is something I can critique and fix, just tell me, you know what I'm saying? Because I always like to, you know, take different type of things, like our D-line coach said, put in your toolbox, you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't like to take, like, criticism and stuff like that. Because I feel like, you know, every every day, you know, we come in, we wake up and train hard. And I feel like, you know, if you have something to tell me, just tell me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know, be any type of anything like that. I just love to hear, you know, the outsiders tell me what's going on. I love that. That amazing answer on that one, man. But for you, go. You were just an All American selection. You guys, you guys went to the FCS playoffs. I mean, you've achieved a lot already. What are your personal goals for the 2022 season to expand on what you've already accomplished? Uh, I had to say, you know, what our strength conditioning coach says. You know, get bigger, faster, and stronger. You know, it was my first year, so I actually know. You know, I got my toe wet. Know what I'm supposed to do. You know, coming in. You know, I know how it feels to play you know, 11 games, 12 games, 13 games now. So knowing after one season and actually, you know, figuring out what I got to do now, you know, after playing one year, I can most definitely take, you know, everything and bump it up a notch, you know, in the weight room, bump it up a notch, you know, when it comes down to conditioning, run a little bit faster, you know, when we start to like, you know, broad jump and things like that, um, do do better than what you did last year. You know, y'all just want to go up on yourself. So most definitely those are my goals. Everything from the film room all the way to, you know, treatment. Just do more than what you did last year. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. So last question here, man. What keeps you motivated year in and year out to keep coming back despite the accolades, despite the success? What keeps Gentle Hunt motivated? I had to say the team, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? Um, you train with them. You know, they're here all the time. And, you know, it feels so good, you know, having a win and then coming back and having another win again and again and again. And just to, to push and they're pushing me, you know, at such a young age to be, you know, one of the best friends I can be. And that's the one thing I just love the most. You know, I couldn't do it without these boys. You know, I could have had these accolades, these stats without, you know, everybody from our corners for giving us time, our safeties for, you know, and giving us time as well, our linebackers for giving us the perfect amount of calls from, the ends, you know, bringing the quarterback up in the pocket, even let's say, um, 
it, uh, the next like nose guard from you know having a double team. So most definitely my brothers, you know I couldn't do it without them. Even on the offensive side, you know going down to score, giving us the ball back, you know giving us the time to get all these stats. So I love these guys, and I'm gonna be a rattler for a long time for a fact. I love it. And so last one here, just a real quick one. Is there a better defensive line going into the FCS next year outside of FAMU? You return Isaiah Land, you return yourself. Are you guys the best off a defensive line in the FCS next year? 100%. We're going to try to double it back. Do what we got to do like we had last year. You know, I feel like, you know, the standard is what it is. And I feel like we are the standard when it comes to D line. You know, we trust each other, we love each other. And I feel like what we put out there on film is the it's a, it's a real deal. You know what I mean? So we're going to try to come back for that top spot on D-line. Coach Patterson does a great job with us. And, yeah, we come for that top spot again. I love it, man. I, I, I like the confidence. I like the confidence, man. Well, thank you so much, man, for this interview. I know it's I know it's a long all season for you guys. It's been a long whole last season with the spring season, the COVID, and then having to come back for a fall season, man. So thank you so much. But this is your time. Plug your social media. Give any and all shout-outs you want to give, man. Let the people know where they can support you and find you. You can find me on Instagram at Gentle Hunt, except for my name. And then uh, on Twitter, Gentle LH 83. I'm all over. Uh, give me a quick follow. You hit me. I'll respond back. And shout out to Rattler Nation, man. We love you guys, man. And be there every single game. Crazy and rowdy like y'all always have been. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bet one of the best home field advantages in the FCS by far, man. But guys, make sure to go follow Gentle on all social media. It'll be linked in the bio below, man. It's all about supporting the players, especially at the FCS level where so many athletes are overlooked. That's the whole point of these interviews, man. But follow Gentle and his journey for a SWAC championship next year and bringing the Rattlers back to, back to the top of the SWAC, guys. But for Gentle, myself, and the Blue Bloods, guys, we are out for right now.